Hello, this is David Frost at the HearthScam Network. I want to talk to you today about building a professional culture in your schools. Donald Shine, in his uh, classic text about leadership in organisations, said the only thing of real importance that leaders do is to create and manage culture. The unique talent of leaders is their ability to work with culture. And he was talking about organisations in general, not just schools and educational institutions. So let's just think about what we mean by a professional culture. I think it's essentially the pattern of values, beliefs and norms of behaviour. You don't necessarily find a, a very clear and consistent pattern across a given school. That's one of the difficulties that school leaders have to face, of course. But the school principal needs to think about the kind of culture that would lead to long-term success for the school. The kind of culture that might enable change and improvement to take place all the time. What kind of culture would that be? Now, a particular culture, you can envision it as a school principal. You can imagine it, perhaps. But it's not something that a government or a principal can simply demand. You can't say, this is our culture, and expect it to happen. You can't force teachers, you can't force people to adopt certain values or to hold certain beliefs. What the principal can do is to take steps to cultivate a particular pattern of values, beliefs and norms of behaviour. To cultivate. I want to focus on this word cultivate. In English the word cultivate is used mostly uh, when we talk about gardening or agriculture. So cultivation involves creating the right soil conditions. Um, it involves sowing seeds, perhaps planting small plants. It involves monitoring the growing and adjusting the intervention which leads to things like hoeing, weeding, watering. All of this you would expect um, to, to take place in a garden, but also on a farm growing arable crops. Now I'm suggesting that we can use this as an analogy uh, for culture building and organisations such as schools. So it's analogous, I'd suggest. So let me take the first part of that analogy, creating the right soil conditions. How does that work out in the context of culture building in school? Well, first of all, a school principal can create organisational structures which are empowering. In other words, which enable others to take action, to make decisions, to take the initiative and so on. So and empowering structures if there are no structures of meetings and uh, lines of communication and so on that enable that, then, then people will just feel without a voice. They will feel they don't have anything, any way to contribute. Secondly, so school principals can create organisational structures which favour dialogue and collegiality. In other words, the structures that give opportunities for teachers to talk to each other. Collegiality is to do with being together, having uh, relationships, trusting relationships. It's about the quality of those relationships. So communication and relationships, of course, goes together. The point is, um, do the organisational structures allow that to develop? That's the key. Thirdly, in certainly in England, in, we have, the school principals have the... Uh, power to control appointments. That may not be the case all over the world, but where school principals can influence this, appointing the right staff whose practice can be seen to, be, to, to match the kind of culture which the school principal is trying to build. That's a key way that uh, principals can build culture. Fourth, um, where, again, where school principals control the school budget, and I know that's not the case everywhere in the world, but where they can 
then they can decide to spend school funds to help particular initiatives. Every change, every initiative has costs attached, expenses. And this is where a school principal can say that is something we could do with investing in. So uh, uh, fifth, identifying facilitators to support teacher leadership. Now, clearly in HeartsCam, we have consistently argued that teachers can learn to exercise leadership if they have the right kind of support. And for that, you need facilitators, not instructors, not people who will tell them what to do, but people who will enable them, who will engage them in a process of reflection and decision making, which will be empowering for them. Now, lastly, school principals, of course, can make time and space available uh, for workshops. If teachers want to get together to discuss how to bring about change, to support each other in doing that, they need somewhere to meet. They need the time during the day to, to meet. And again, <clears throat> that is something that can be done in the margins of school life, but it has to be thought about. So can I suggest we need to reflect on how we go about creating the right conditions? Here's just one example. A school principal in America, Priscilla Dawson, uh, she used to be the principal at Trenton High School, New Jersey, and I visited her there to look at what was going on. She ran a very, very large school, um, and she, she thought that colleagues, uh, you know, hundreds of teachers who worked there, they didn't feel connected, they didn't feel able to talk to each other. It was just too big. So she wanted to improve collegiality, so she created this new organisational structure. Uh, which was called an instructional council. In America, they use the word instruction in relation to teaching, really. It's, it means teaching. So an instructional council had uh, within it particular people who were called teacher leaders, also vice principals, also school counsellors and professional development facilitators, and so on. And any teacher could come along to the council with a problem. It may be a very particular problem, you know, this child uh, is not motivated to learn or, you know, this child doesn't seem to be able to do this or I'm having difficulty finding out how I can uh, develop a lesson about that and so on. And they could pose a problem and get advice and discussion within the council. So that's Priscilla's example. Organisational structures, what might you consider? Uh, introducing into your school as a structure which will be empowering, enable dialogue, build collegiality, and so on. So let's look at the second part of my analogy, the sowing of the seeds. Now in, in the context of building culture in school, perhaps the seeds can be seen as ideas. So introducing ideas about practice is something the principal can do directly. The principal is always uh, somebody who can speak to the whole uh, group of teachers in the school, perhaps separate groups, perhaps the whole staff, and can introduce new ideas. Um, also, the school principal can introduce ideas about how teachers work together in the school, about how to improve uh, the quality of collegiality within the school. The, the head teacher can, the, the school principal rather, can say, um, I think we really ought to talk to each other in this way or in these places at this time and so on. can make those kinds of suggestions, bring in those ideas. Thirdly, uh, school principals can invite others to bring in new ideas, external speakers perhaps, to talk uh, about ideas that help to cultivate the kind of culture the school principal has in mind. And, and of course that means the school principal needs to know uh, who is, is out there in the wider professional community that could say things to the whole staff, perhaps run a seminar, perhaps make a speech that would bring new ideas and help to steer the culture towards the desired goal. And fourthly, uh, colleagues could be encouraged to visit other schools where the principal knows that there are practices there that the teacher could observe those practices that, that, again, help the school to 
to move towards the kind of most desirable culture. So visiting other schools, uh, school principals can suggest it, can perhaps find the, the expenses for travelling or whatever it is. And in these days, of course, we're doing everything uh, on, on digitally, aren't we? Um, by because of the the COVID nineteen, so um, it's easier in a sense to to, uh, to 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 learn about other schools. But I'm sure there'll never be any substitute for actually visiting a school and seeing what's going on in action. So again, can I suggest we need to reflect on sowing the seeds? Let me give you an example. Ben Creasy, who I know well is an assistant head teacher at the Robert Barclay Academy in Hertfordshire um, in the UK. And he knows a great deal about assessment because he studied it. Uh, he did his master's degree with Hartscam uh, on the topic of uh, assessing students' work. And so he was asked to give a talk uh, at his school about the assessment of students' learning to the whole staff. Uh, and. He has been invited to do that at other schools, in neighbouring schools, and he, he is good at advocating for more efficient methods of marking students' work. He advises teachers to collaborate so they can develop better approaches across the whole school, so, so that the students have you know, consistent uh, uh, practice uh, and their expectations are consistently reinforced by the way that teachers uh, set homework and the way teachers respond to homework. It's consistently done because it's collaborative. This is the kind of key messages that Ben's talks would give. So that's just one example. So how might you introduce good ideas to the teachers in your school? So the third part of the analogy, monitoring, growing and adjusting the intervention. Well, principals need to devise strategies for informing themselves about the professional culture in their school. In a garden, you can just walk around and look. In a school, it's not so easy to know what the pattern of values, beliefs, norms of behaviour uh, is. What is that pattern? Um, so, you know, the, the, the principal needs to try to have a way of finding out about that. Is it, for example, going to, to visit uh, regularly different parts of the school and to ask people questions? Is it um, to do some kind of a survey to get people to respond to something? Is it to run a workshop in which people are asked to talk about their perceptions of the school culture? So secondly, when, when the principal uh, realises there are obstacles, when, when obstacles become visible, the principal can act to remove such obstacles. So if you're interested in growing towards a particular culture and you see there's something standing in the way, uh, perhaps it's a, you know, a problem within a particular part of the school where somebody very influential is saying unhelpful things or there's some kind of uh, disagreement and a uh, lack of collaboration in a particular part of the school. And, and so the principal might be able to intervene to, to tackle that obstacle. Thirdly, school principals quite often, certainly in, in the UK, quite often seek feedback. They want to know what people think, what the teachers think, sometimes also what the students think. But it's bad practice, it seems to me, for a school principal just to rely on the same uh, small number of voices. You know, it's easy, isn't it, to ask your vice principal, what do teachers think? What, 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 do, they, what, what do they believe is, is the right way to do blah, blah, blah? and to only listen to what the vice principal says. You won't necessarily get a full rounded picture. So I suggest, you know, a principal needs a quite a sophisticated uh, set of tools to find out what the culture of the school is, is really like. So let's reflect for a moment on, on how we might monitor uh, the growing towards a certain kind of professional culture and how we might adjust the intervention. Now here's an example. Val Hill, that many of you have met, uh, was a vice principal at Birchwood High School, Hertfordshire. She is part of the HeartsCam team. Um, she organised uh, at her school an audit of the school's professional culture. She used a tool that's been used in a number of schools in HeartsCam 
you know, it's it's a kind of uh, it's a sort of questionnaire. It, it represents a continuum of certain things to do with decision making and and collaboration and so on, and and people are asked to respond and place their school on the continuum. Um, so she asked groups of teachers to to use this tool and to complete uh, their response to it, and then to discuss amongst themselves what kind of culture uh, they they think is is dominant in the school. And then she also asked her colleagues on the senior leadership team, the school principal, uh, vice principal, and so on. Um, she she asked them to 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 do the same thing, to do the same exercise as the teachers had done, so they could compare. The, di the different results, and it's the difference which is most informative. So there's just one example. How might you monitor the development of your school's professional culture? And now we come to the fourth part of my analogy. So having monitored, you know what's happening, you know what's going on, so you have to intervene. The hoeing, the weeding, the watering is what you would do in a garden, or indeed in a field. But what about in a school? So principals, of course, as, as I've already said, they can intervene to solve problems that arise. So it may be a particular relationship between colleagues. It may be that there's some kind of um, uh, antipathy uh, or animosity uh, between key people in a certain part of the school. The principal is the one who has the authority to say, could we please have a conversation about this? We need to resolve this problem because it's getting in the way of the development of the school. So that, that's one key. And that's transactional leadership. It's, it's, it's very well understood by most school principals. And some might say it, in, in fact, tends to be the dominant form of leadership, that intervening to solve particular problems. Secondly, um, principals may become uh, uh, aware of misconceptions or unhelpful practices developing. Um, it may be that, you know, within a certain area of the school, some influential voices are making comments about, um, you know, value-related comments about what we should be striving for in the school and so on, which the principal thinks mm, that's not a helpful thing for younger colleagues to be influenced by. So again, the principal can step in and say, actually, that's not the way I think we should be seeing uh, the way we believe in this school. That's not the way we should be uh, influencing our younger teachers. Uh, now, in the, in the system in England, uh, there are things that school principals can do um, to, uh, let us say, to, to um, restrain such difficult teachers, uh, and in the end, uh, perhaps to persuade them that they will be better off teaching somewhere else. So that's an interesting problem, but if, if there are ideas going around which are really unhelpful, then there's got to be some way to intervene, preferably something um, more nuanced, uh, something that is helpful in enabling a certain individual to understand something that they don't seem to understand, or to put out some information that uh, clarifies something for, for colleagues. I'm going to stop this one, it's bloody awful. So let's take a little time to reflect on the hoeing, weeding and watering uh, aspect of culture building. And I'll give you an example. Claire Robbins is the principal at Sir John Law's school. Uh, this is in Hertfordshire in the UK. Um, and. Uh, She's she's been principal there for for many years, and and she she is very good at building culture. So at that school, they, they, there was a staff meeting every Friday morning, uh, and they had a, this by rotation. In other words, it, you know, your turn this week, our turn next week. Uh, this each subject teaching team would be asked to present a description of a particular teaching and learning strategy that they felt very pleased with, very proud of in their department. Uh, and they had a kind of game uh, way of doing this. So it was very funny uh, and, and people really used to enjoy the, the sessions. <clears throat> I can't remember the rules of the game, but, but it was done in a very particular uh, light-hearted way. But the, the ideas were what really counts here. They were putting forward a way of practicing. Uh, and of course, 
this meant that the, the team who presented their, their idea, they felt very honoured and valued, that they got a, you know, applause and, and the spotlight was shone on what they were doing and they were very pleased with themselves. And others, of course, learnt from, from that presentation. They'd say, ah, maybe we could use that way of thinking in our department and so on. So what strategies might you use to draw attention to good practice and encourage teachers in your school to develop, to develop better practice. So finally, I want to, to make a comment about the kind of professional culture that's conducive to teacher leadership, because that's what we're interested in promoting at HeartsCamp. So if you as a school principal can engineer a different set of norms of behaviour, the values and the beliefs that underpin those, those actions, those values and beliefs will probably follow the behaviours. So if you can make it normal to do things in a particular way, the beliefs and the values will follow. Some people may assume the opposite, that you have to get the values and beliefs right first in order to get the practice. Well, that may be true, but I'd like to suggest that the thing you can most obviously work on is establishing normal ways of, of, of working, of acting, of behaving, and the, the ideas behind them will eventually become clearer and will develop alongside. So in order for teachers to be able to lead change, they need to feel that it, it is okay to raise questions about current practice. They need to feel that it's normal to propose an initiative to improve a particular aspect of practice. And the principal needs to welcome their ideas and innovations. So if the teachers feel that this is the kind of school I'm in, where it's OK to raise questions, it's OK to propose initiatives, and that in fact the principal will welcome these ideas and innovations, then teacher leadership has a chance of really succeeding. So thank you very much for your attention.